haiku, one of the shortest forms of poetry in the world, has roots that go back over 1,200 years. It captures the changing seasons, the subtle beauty of everyday life, and the emotions within. Photographs capture that one single moment. The two worlds meet to create a new form of visual literature called photo haiku. A world of endless beauty and imagination. Tenji Temple in Tokyo. A place where haiku poet Issa Kobayashi held close to his heart. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I have always admired your work, and so I must admit, I was a bit nervous when I got up this morning. Really? <laughs> I have only seen you on TV, so I always wondered what you would be like in person. I understand that your work as director spans many genres, such as musicals, operas, and even kabuki. It is truly remarkable that you are able to work at such a high level in so many different fields. As you may already know, this program is about photo haiku, which combines photographs with haiku, but not necessarily confining the haiku to its traditional 575 format, seeking to expand the possibilities of this new type of visual literature. Yes, I understand, and I think there are many commonalities between stage directing and photo haiku. For example, a play requires a script, and there are always key words that trigger your imagination. I have to create a story where nothing initially exists. I think that haiku is much the same as it reflects the author's life experiences, expanding upon them with his or her imagination. It is quite similar to the process that I follow when expanding upon the role of the actors. I always thought that they were similar as well. We can really give rein to imagination. The two things re reverberate against each other and uh -huh. echo, and it gives people two ways to enter the art, actually. You have a photograph there which sort of echoes with the poetry itself, and some people are visual, some people are word That's people. Right. So uh -huh. it, it sort of draws you in, and you can enjoy both in a new way. Wow. The three-line format, Sokufuri where the haiku is not just a description of the photo, and seasonality are our three guidelines. Our haiku masters will now discuss and select the haiku master of the month from all of the submissions we received from around the world. Let's take a look at our first photo haiku. War news. Knitting anew the sweater for her son. War news. Knitting anew the sweater for her son.
The first thing I noticed was the composition of the photograph and how it grabs your attention with the ladybug. Then I noticed the spider web, which to me shows the passage of time, perhaps telling us that the barbed wire has been there for a while. The photograph mainly shows just a barbed wire, but when put into words, I was impressed that the author expanded the interpretation of the photograph, imagining a world beyond to talk about war. Mm -hmm. I also chose this poem, and I, I thought the sharpness of the barbed wire contrasts nicely with the gentleness of a ladybug. Mm. And um, ladybugs are, are a symbol of good fortune. Uh -huh. So good fortune has landed on this sharp and not very pleasant, not very friendly barbed wire fence. So it's a symbol of hope, good luck. Uh, and so you sense that this mother, mm -hmm. uh, every mother's greatest hope is that her child will come home again and, and will be I safe. See. I see. So there's great hope in the poem. Mm -hmm. And it's, it reads war news, knitting anew the sweater. So it's two, two uses of the word new. So that you have the word news, and because of that news, maybe it's ended, maybe it's, there's a break, or maybe uh, uh -huh. it's finished. Knitting anew, one more time, knitting uh -huh. the sweater uh -huh. for her son. Uh -huh. yeah. That's really interesting. When I first saw the words war news, I thought that the mother had just received news that a war had just started and that her son was leaving for war. But now I think perhaps it may be just the opposite, that her son was already at war and there was news that the war might actually be ending. Mm. What intrigued me the most was when I thought about the mother's emotions and what must have been running through her mind as she awaits her son's return. The mother is earnestly knitting a sweater for her son, who may or may not have killed people during the war, but she has no way of knowing. All she can do is wait, longing for his return. There are so many things I can picture. This photo haiku really got my imagination going. I thought there was a connection between the knot on the barbed wire and the mother's act of knitting. That image really hurts my heart. Perhaps she is knitting surrounded by a barbed wire fence, continuing to knit for her son, though people may be telling her that he is most likely dead. The mother's hope bordering on denial, believing her son will come home, it's painful. I can create many plays from this one photo haiku alone. Okay, let's move on to the next photo haiku. Brothers of the wind, herald the day has arrived. Each one sings its song. Brothers of the wind, herald the day has arrived. Each one sings its song. What I noticed right away was the clean line created by the contrast between the blue sky and the shadow of the roof. I also think that the author did a great job of realizing Fusoku Furi in this photo haiku, as it was not just a straight description of the photo. The first question is how and where the author felt the wind. The author saw the three wind chimes and expressed it as the brothers of the wind. It is a great metaphor, and I think the author brought a very unique perspective to this photograph. The phrase, Herald the day has arrived is also quite intriguing and mysterious. Were they waiting for the day when they will all sing the same song at the same time? What is the day? I think that a good haiku always leaves space for interpretation, to make the reader think. If it doesn't challenge the reader to think, I do not think that the haiku is very interesting. In my opinion, it must always prompt the reader to ask questions. I really like the phrase, brothers of the wind. I think that anyone with siblings can relate. 
But siblings all go their individual ways, doing what pleases them. Me and my brothers especially, we were all over the place, not seeing eye to eye on anything. We each have our own wives or lovers, living our own lives. It says, Herald the day has arrived. And I too wonder, what is the day? Is it the day when those three brothers finally agreed on something? Or the day on which they finally celebrated something together? Those emotions overlap beautifully with the serenity of the photograph. Maybe it was but a moment, but a moment when they all felt as one, a moment in life, a moment captured within their songs. You know, your, your point is really good because you're, you're describing Herald the day. Mm -hmm. So that is a specific day. Yes, if it right. says Herald day has arrived, uh -huh. that's any day. It means daylight that's has arrived, but that, it's the day. Yes, so what is so that day? Oh, so, mm. so. Good point. I was really interested to know what happened on the day. In a play, this would definitely be the climax where each of the characters finally understood each other on the day for that moment. The great haiku poet of the Edo period, Isa Kobayashi's work transcends time. He wrote many of his finest haiku poems here at Entenji Temple. He sympathized with the less fortunate, inspiring them through his work. During the breeding season, the male frog fights with one another over a female frog. I think that Isa empathized with the male frog when he saw that it was a skinny, overmatched frog, seeing a little bit of himself in the struggling frog. Isa truly loved small animals and insects. If he had a camera at the time, I think that the photographs would have reflected his delicate sensibility. Tenji Temple has hosted the Issa Festival for about 50 years, to which children have submitted over 110,000 haiku. poet himself, the chief priest of Entenji Temple, who selects the haiku, says that Issa's benevolent and likable character inspires the children to write haiku. The submissions from the children often bring tears to my eyes. I remember one child feeling sorry for a pencil which he often used because he was in essence cutting short the pencil's life every time he sharpened it. There was a child who felt sorry for an ant after cutting the grass. Children never cease to amaze me. I think that their ability to empathize overlaps with that of Isa's. Tenji Temple by Michio Nakahara. Since becoming a monk, how many years? Sweat drips down his back. Since becoming a monk, how many years? Sweat drips down his back. Master Nakahara chose the two photos of the month and called out to the world 
to haiku this photo. We have two photographs, one which was taken right over there. You can see the little frog looking straight at us. Let's now take a look at our first photo haiku. You see me, but I don't see you. No matter, I'm stone. You see me, but I don't see you. No matter, I'm stone. I think the last phrase, no matter, I'm stone, is a very powerful and effective phrase. This haiku never mentions the word frog, which is very clever. We can clearly see that the frog is made of stone from the photograph, so one might say that the haiku may be too close, that it may be too literal and descriptive, but I still praise the author for having the creativity and imagination to write such a haiku from this image. When I first saw this photo, I immediately thought that the frog was turned to stone against its will. But after seeing the haiku and the words, but I don't see you, I realized that it was the opposite. I actually felt a strong conviction that though others may see him, it was as if the frog was saying, I will not look at you. I will sit here and stay strong by turning my heart into stone. The haiku took me by surprise. This haiku could be seen as being too literal, but I think it has created quite a distance from the photo. Splashing water. A startled sparrow takes wing. A moment in stone. Splashing water. A startled sparrow takes wing. A moment in stone. Do you know what it's, it's, it's the sounds? Mm -hmm. Splashing takes stone, startled sparrow. Wow. That alliteration is usually mm -hmm. very pleasing, and people usually say that's that's quite pretty. Also, there's water and wing. Uh -huh. So there's S's and W's that are repeated. Yeah. That's beautiful. I think this is also, in some respect, a, a homage to Basho's poetry. Mm -hmm. um, the, the frog jumping in the old pond, sound uh -huh. of water. Uh -huh. This is splashing water again, and mm. so we automatically think wow. of Basho's poetry. And in this case, it's a tiny sparrow that takes wing, that flies away from us. But mm. the moment in stone is the beautifully created haiku, the one that we always carry in our mind. Mm. So I think that because this action is so beautifully expressed here, the moment remains in stone because mm. maybe the human's main job is to appreciate nature. That's the thing that we can do best. That's the least harmful thing that humans do, I guess. Mm. I think this author understands that one of the most important elements of haiku is to capture that one single moment. Mm. Cold feet, which way now, up or down? Summer wedding, a place for her sandals on his stoop. I'm really impressed by how the different haiku completely changes the complexion of the photograph. Though the photograph may be the same, each individual person has a unique filter, their eyes. The eyes are the windows, but the view is affected by one's emotions. That is why we receive so many different haiku for the same photograph. It is what makes this program interesting. Night has grown. Tiny water drops. Islands in a new spring morning. Setting sun. Behind his eyelashes, the child 
in Dreamland. Old Tree Island. A small world, peacefully isolated. Let's take a look at our next photo haiku. From somewhere, a voice talking about borrowed life. From somewhere, a voice talking about borrowed life. This one is very difficult to fully comprehend, but that is exactly why I like it. It reminds me of that song, Over the Rainbow, but I'm guessing the author heard something from above. And this phrase, borrowed life, I can truly relate to this. It is probably talking about a life that was given. To tell you the truth, when I write plays, they are not my own ideas. When I read a script to produce a play, I am waiting for the voice that comes to me from above. My senses come alive as I read over the script and something comes down from above. That process is what makes me happy. It's, it's like an actor. An actor's life is always borrowing a voice, borrowing a life. In a strange way, I am not the main character of my own life. I feel that everything I am, I have received from above. This angel in the photograph, looking out into the horizon, perhaps the angel is a god. However, I do feel that maybe the haiku is a bit too descriptive of the photograph. Well, you have an angel in here, so it automatically makes you think of some sort of religious theme that's backing up the poem. But I wasn't sure, to be honest with you, I wasn't sure what borrowed life meant in the poem. I, I was a little confused about that. But your explanation was fantastic. That, that sort of opened up the poem for me. Yeah. Compared to the other photographs we selected, this one is not as easy to understand. I think this is a type of photograph where you just have to allow it to sink in, feel it in its entirety. So when I saw that the author was able to draw the words borrowed life from this photograph, I think that the author succeeded in realizing fusoku huri, creating distance from the photograph. Okay, let's take a look at our next photo haiku. New mattress, and always, this old dream. New mattress, and always, this old dream. It makes me wonder about what had happened before the mattress was changed. Perhaps the author experienced a nightmare that the author cannot erase from his mind. And why change the mattress? Maybe there was another person lying beside the author. A lover, husband, son or ghost perhaps. I can imagine all sorts of scenarios about what may have happened. And this photograph is very eerie. I can't tell whether this is moonlight or artificial light, and I can't tell whether this is a lake or a pond or just a puddle, but it does make you feel that there is something hiding behind it all. Right, right. Mm. Yeah, but this person is seeing the same old dream, so uh, his situation is also kotteru, frozen, mm. a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. Even though he changes the mattress, he still has the same, the same dream. What I am impressed by the most is the dramatic contrast that the author was able to express in this photo haiku. The photograph is quite eerie and mysterious, while the word mattress is very mundane. It is something people use in their everyday life. The stark contrast with the mysterious image has gone beyond Husoku Huri, and the haiku is expressing something utterly different. That is, I believe, what intrigues us about this photo haiku. Not too far, not too close. What do you think of this concept? 
I like that concept. In fact, I prefer it. One of the problems that I have faced increasingly over the last 20 years, as I work on stage, is that everyone wants everything to be easy and understandable. Plays have become overly explanatory, catering too much to the crowd. When people are forced to think and they're not able to completely understand, the tendency these days is to tell me that the script is not interesting. But I completely disagree. I think that being challenged to think is what makes things interesting. That's why I love this concept of Fusoko Furi. It allows readers to use their own imagination. I never thought that photo haiku would be this much fun. When I first saw these photographs on my own, I had my own ideas about what the photograph was expressing. But then I see how each individual author brings a unique perspective which is different from mine, making it even more interesting. The Haiku Masters will now select the Haiku Master of the Month. War News. Knitting anew the sweater for her son. War news, knitting anew the sweater for her son. There are wars going on in the world in many places. This photo haiku does a beautiful job of expressing the powerful emotions of a mother longing for her son. I chose this photo haiku as the haiku master of the month because it is a powerful anti-war cry and from a visual standpoint, the photograph is unique and stunning. I'm really excited that I had the good fortune of meeting this photo haiku. This is raw human emotion, a mother longing for her son, packed into a simple three-line form. It is more powerful than a news story. Thank you all for watching Haiku Masters. Please stay connected by submitting your photo haiku through our website. You may be our next Haiku Master.